Welcome to Understanding the Word of God. This channel is dedicated to understanding the Bible one verse at a time. Today we're going to, instead of concentrating on one verse, I'm going to walk you with the way that I go through and search the Bible for truth. The first thing is to start with prayer because I need to have God's truth. If I'm just trying to do a, a, a search of the scriptures to, to gain more knowledge or to gain uh, an understanding that is apart from what God wants to show me, then I'm building, I'm building in vain. So Father in heaven, I thank you for this day, I thank you that you're there and you desire to, to lead and guide me into all truth. For you sent Yeshua, for he says that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to you except through him. So I pray as I look into your word that you would reveal to me what it is I need to know today. That you would uh, give me the understanding that I need and the revelation into my, into my heart that will... Have me walk in a way that's pleasing to you. In the name of your Son, Amen. So after the prayer, I, I wait and I wait on God and see if there's a, something that comes to mind. The word that kind of comes to mind right now is, is deceived. And it's easy to be deceived. I've been deceived so many times in my life. And so let's look up and see is there, what does the scripture have to say about deceived? So the scripture I'm thinking about is one in Revelations that talks about the, uh, the deceiver. says, the great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. So as I stop for a minute and just kind of ponder this verse, what has always stuck out to me before this is that he leads the whole world astray. So I'm part of the world and so it's it's definitely uh, conceivable that I could be led astray. And uh, I, we know in our own lives as we evaluate it and we look at others, we see how, well, how can that person do that? Or how can that person believe that? Or how can that person support that person? Or, or why does a person do this? I mean, we have all these things where we're looking at other people and we just see them and we're going, how could they do that? Well. One of the reasons is right here what it says. It says that the devil or Satan who leads the whole world astray. There's a spiritual being out there and beings that are working to lead us astray, to deceive us. And that goes right back to the Garden of Eden where the serpent was talking to Eve and told her that You eat of this tree of the knowledge of good and evil and you'll be wise like God. And she saw the tree was good for food and she took and she ate it. And at that point, her relationship with God was broken. And so this just reminds me that in the beginning, the fall of mankind came in the garden and all the way to the very end, Satan is still deceiving the whole world. Uh, and nothing... If, if a person's intellectually honest and they look at the world and they see what goes on, they see the there's good in the world. Uh, people are helping one another and kind one another. No matter what person you are, no matter what culture, no matter where you are, there, there, is, a, there is an aspect where people do want to care for one another. But at the same time, there's, there's people that come up out of the, uh, the shadows and they just destroy societies. They destroy villages they destroy countries they destroy worlds and uh and kingdoms it's like this is all a result of the the enemy deceiving them for whatever reason whether it's the uh the lust of money or the lust of eye i mean why 
Why in the world would someone want to go and, and harm their neighbor? The, the reason why is because the enemy has deceived them into thinking that either their, their, their neighbor hates them or something. And so as I, I think on this, you know, it's like, where am I being deceived? Am, am I being tricked by the enemy? What is, what is the uh, deception that he's trying to sow into my life? And, it, and the only way we can tell that deception, the only way, that's, that's, there again, that statement's not really correct. You know, one way to tell, the, tell that deception is, well, there's multiple ways. Uh, one way is to, uh, one of the ways is to have the people in my life to listen to them. If they truly love me and care for me and they see me doing something that's harmful, to listen to them. Another way is, is to search out the scriptures and see truth. For, the, uh, if, for every tree will be known of its fruit. So am I actively trying to deceive other people? If I'm actively trying to deceive other people, then I have, I have come under a delusion. And that, that delusion is going to continue to lead me down the wrong path. So the scripture that comes to mind now as I'm thinking about this is, is in Revelations, or not in Revelations, but Romans chapter 1. So let's go to Romans, and we'll go down to the new King James Version. It's the one I've read the most, so I'm more familiar with it. Paul, a bondservant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God, which he promised before through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who was born of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. Through him we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom you are also called of Jesus Christ. So to all who are in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. So here's the, end, the opening verses to, to the book of Romans. And there's, there's so much in here. That's what I get so distracted when I start reading the scriptures because it's like there's so many good things in here. Just Paul, the very first thing, Paul, a bondservant of Jesus Christ. He's not even seeing himself as being free to run around and do what he wants. He has submitted himself to Jesus Christ as Lord. So can we have a truly, can we, can we really be a Christian or can we really be, you definitely can't be an apostle unless, unless you are a, a slave to Jesus Christ. You, you, you can't be. I mean, they, can you be a disciple without being a slave? Well, he says, I think a disciple is the is the steps to being being to become an apostle. Continue to look through this, I'm trying to get back on track for the the uh, the aspect of deception. Where it says here, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. So here comes the next part. It says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who suppress the truth in unrighteousness, because what may be known of God is manifested in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse, because though they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were they thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into images made like corruptible man, birds, and four-footed animals and creeping things. So 
So as we stop and, and think about what has been said here, how does this apply to being deceived? What, what is it that, uh, what is the enemy using here to deceive mankind? And where am I being deceived? Right here it says, uh, because they knew God, they did not glorify him, nor were they thankful. Uh, there's this scripture in Philippians that says to be, to give thanks to the Lord. And so are we giving thanks? That's the first step to be, uh, to be deceived is not giving thanks. It's, it's something that's so simple. That's the thing I notice with, with the commands of God. If, if they become complicated, they're probably have, or some kind of religious formula that has been set up by what we've heard because uh, you can't sell a book unless you've got some kind of formula, right? But to, to live life is, you really can't formalize living life. It's just something that we do, something that we live, and, and you go and, and, and just being thankful throughout the day, just giving thanks to God. But when we don't give thankful, then our thoughts be, become futile. And I've noticed that be before. When I try to get into an area where I shouldn't be in my thoughts and where I'm trying to either figure things out or there's uh, concentrating on, on things that are not, not thankful, like if I'm angry about something or, or I'm judging someone else or something didn't go my way. Those are all contrary to being thankful. And if we don't or we don't become thankful, then the foolish hearts are darkened, and then my heart will become darkened. And I won't even re I won't even think about being thankful. I mean, how many times in the past have I walked down this wrong this wrong path? It's just too many times to even want to think about. So to get out of the darkness is to begin to be thankful. And how many times have we ourselves thought we were wise because of something that we thought or some some uh, some clever thought or or we had a we had a system. Well, if I do this, this, and this, then uh, then this will go for me. And that reminds me of the scripture that says uh, the people that have come in to buy and sell and trade. They say today we will go here and make money, but what they should be saying is. If the Lord wills, we will do this and that. It's important to uh, to give thanks in everything, to seek God in our in our ways. It says He's a light unto our our path and a lamp. So we need that that lamp of God burning within us to lighten the path that He would have us go down. And if we continue in this deception, we're going to begin to worship the uh, creation. We're going to worship uh, cars, or we're going to worship our bank account, we're going to worship uh, we can worship family, we can worship religious leader, we can worship a political leader, we can worship ourselves. Uh, as it says in Judges, everyone had done what was right in their own eyes. And that's a scary place to be is when we can only do right in our own eyes because we're ours we have been darkened and this just continues to go down and and the destruction of deception is terrible who exchange the truth of God for a lie we don't ever want to be in that situation in our life is where we're exchanging God's truth for a lie uh, it happens all the time if we're not giving thanks to God. Giving thanks to God is is, a, a, the, is our defense against the onslaught of the enemy. Giving thanks to God is our defense against the onslaught of the enemy. And if we continue in this path, path God actually gives, gives them up to their vile passions. He does not stop us. This is where the, the free will comes in. If we decide to not be thankful and we decide to, 
to walk away from his ways, we're going to be deceived. We're going to be drugged down this path of passions. And this path is, is destructive. If you read the history of some of these people that have just lived for nothing but their own pleasure, their end is miserable. And then anything goes. I mean, we're in a culture where it's like if you try to say anything against any type of uh, behavior, then you're, you know, you're considered a, a bigot or a racist or, or a homophobe or, a, or whatever. They, they have some label they're going to throw on you if you declare that something that they're doing is, is against nature. For even that they did not retain God in their knowledge. And how do we retain God in our knowledge? It's just being thankful. It's not trying to, to, do every, to do it all ourselves. It's not me trying to achieve some type of uh, greatness or some big standard. I mean, even thinking about that it's just you know, brings sighs to me. I just want to sigh. <laughs> for Jesus said, Come unto me, for I'm meek and lowly of heart. Learn of me, for my burden is is light and my yoke is easy so if we can be yoked with jesus and the way we do that is we have to deny ourselves we have to deny ourselves these these fleshly worldly passions these things that are going to bring destruction into our life and yield to him who was and is and is to come for he is our savior oh well, here's another area where we can easily be deceived is in the area of of judging others is therefore you are inexcusable O man whoever you are who judge for in whatever you judge another you condemn yourself for you who judge practices the same things for we know that the judgment of God is according to truth against those who practice such things and do you think this O man you who judge those practicing such things and doing the same you will escape the judgment of God so here's a whole aspect around the world around the concept of judging if I'm doing the action and judging others well then obviously society is going to call me a, a hypocrite how many times have a does a religious person if they get caught with their hand in the cookies cookie jar they're going to be a quickly judged and condemned by society but the people that are actually judging and condemning them are doing the same thing but they're judging them because they're they got caught because they were talking about doing those things that weren't right so it it comes down to you know we're all sinners we're all have our hand in the cookie jar and we all need to repent that's the bottom line that there, there is no us and them it's it's all of us together we're we're all sold under the deception of the enemy for that's what we started out with saying that he's there to deceive the whole world and one way he deceives us is to getting us to judge one another I find this in my own life it's it's easy to judge someone else and say that they're such and such and that's that's not it shouldn't be easy that should be something that doesn't even come out of my mouth I should not be wanting to uh, to judge another person and so this is the point where where there's conviction coming in now because I realize that I've I've done this and I've, and I do it too easily when I do do it I need to uh, humble myself acknowledge to God that that his ways are righteous I need to be thankful for him and if somebody does something that is offensive to me I can give them thanks because I felt offended well why am I feeling offended apparently there's something in me that isn't that isn't love uh, so that, that is a, a good thing. It's a good thing that when I get offended by someone else because it shows that there's a sensitivity in me, in my flesh, that is not love. Because being offended is not a fruit of the Spirit. And if I have that in me, but it's hiding, and then when something happens and it comes to the surface, well, I can give thanks to God. I can thank you, Father, that I'm offended. And, and then reveal to me what it is that that's causing that offense is it something that is a past memory that's being exposed because that's a huge part of 
what causes us to be offended. It's something that in the past that we haven't let go of. It's an unforgiveness that we have. I know that that unforgiveness is a huge jailer in our lives. If we have unforgiveness, we will be jailed. And that's one of those deceitful things the enemy wants to do. He wants to get us to judge others. And he loves to get us to judge others when we're doing the same thing. So even if we're judging someone who's saying that, hey, you shouldn't be uh, committing adultery, and then they get caught committing adultery, and then we judge them because they got caught committing adultery, and we we're committing adultery, then <laughs> we're not any different than them. I mean, we might think we're different than them, but we're not. If we're doing the same thing, like lying, oh, look, that person, they just lied. You know, it's an obvious lie, but then I myself am lying. So how, how does that make me righteous by calling out someone who says you shouldn't lie, who is lying, versus if I'm lying, it's just, it's the same thing. So, so let's not let's let's walk past this judging one another. We know that the judgment of God is according to truth against those who practice such things. So that is where we need to walk, and we need to walk in in God, allowing Him to judge us. And this is another thought too that comes to mind when when we're dealing with judging. And we go, well, why is that person getting away with it? I mean, it's not fair. You know, they shouldn't be getting away with it. It says, and it says here in verse 4, Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering, suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? So that's another aspect, too, that is different than the way I think, and definitely different than the way the enemy wants us to think. The goodness of God will actually lead us to repentance. He's waiting for that person to repent. I mean, God is not willing that any should perish. But according to with your hardness of your heart and the impotent heart, you are treasuring up for yourself the wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to each one according to his deeds. So in the end, nobody's going to get away with it. We will be rendered each one according to his deeds. So it's important that we don't walk in this deception of judging others. Whether they're getting away with it or whether they're not, whether they did something, we're doing it, and then we're getting mad at them because they're doing it. It says, eternal life to those who by patience continue to do good seeking for glory, honor, and immortality. But to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey in righteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation, and anguish on every soul of man who does evil, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, but glory, honor, and peace to everyone who works what is good, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, there is no partiality with God. So this is really good here too it, it, it if you feel like things are not just right here it tells you things are being just that's another lie that the enemy wants to tell you is that things aren't just that people are getting away with stuff and and it's not fair and and uh, the list goes on and on i mean we we see that but it says right here that no one's going to get away with it there everyone who practices evil they're going to get caught and, and peace to everyone who works that is good. So if you want peace in your life, do good works. If you are having evil in your life, it could be that you're secretly judging someone or, or you're practicing judging. I uh, grew up being offended quite, uh, quite easily and then I developed a, a bad habit of being offended and I began to Categorize, categorize all those things into my emotions. And so my emotions then became full of offense. And I could be offended at just a, the slightest little thing. And it took a while to change that path and turn around and to walk away from that. Because offense by others, whatever they might do, is it's death. Because we're being tricked into judging them. And that's where the enemy has come. He wants us to judge others, judge ourselves, condemn ourselves, to walk down that 
path of unrighteousness. So then Paul goes in here talking about the law, circumcision. So at this point, let's see. So we we started out about being deceived. So in our own lives, one of the best ways to to overcome deception is to just start reading the scriptures waiting on God as we read the scriptures and allowing him to reveal to us things. Like if I'm reading a scripture and it goes, aha, yes, that applies to me. Here's another good scripture that, to deal with, with judging. So as it's written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks after God. They have all turned aside. They have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good, no, not one. Their throat is an open tomb. With their tongues they have practiced deceit. The poison of ass is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness, whose feet are swift to shed blood, and destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Here is a description of what happens when we do judge when we aren't being thankful. This is all a result of not being thankful. It's, there again, it's, it's so simple. God's ways are so simple in that to give thanks in everything. It is the, the building block to not being deceived. And it not, it's not something we can do one time and say, okay, it's good, we're all done with. But it's a, it's a new way to live. This... Uh, Scripture is going to definitely apply to us. It's very cutting. It's like there's no one who seeks after God. If I'm honest with myself and say, God, am I really seeking after you? Do I really desire to have you in my life? And if I don't, it's because there's some lie I'm believing. I've been tricked by the enemy again. He is so cunning that if I stop giving him thanks, he will trick me. I, I do not have the ability to to not be deceived by him because I'm part of the world. I'm, I'm in the world. I'm, my, my body is, is tied to the world. There is no way to, to, to cleave my body from the world. So he will use uh, my bodily desires and, and uh, wants to drag me down into this area of deception. Area of deception. So as I'm searching out God's word, I'm just I'm reading it and looking at it and seeing what, what pops out. Uh, what then shall we say of Abraham our father, who found according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was accounted him for righteousness. Now to him who works, the wages are not counted, but grace, but as a debt. So this is going on again in that if I'm giving God thanks, I'm not, I'm not laboring to gain his favor. And that's, that's a big part of what happens when a person does experience God and, and God saves them and takes them out of the world. There can, there's a natural desire there to want to, to serve him and, and do what's right. And, and then we'll get tricked into becoming a, religious and we'll get tricked into thinking that uh, I know more than him or or, I, or look at that sinner over there or, or I become judgmental because I know what's right now and which I didn't know before. So as we, as we come to the realization and start understanding the scriptures, we're, we're going to see things that we can easily use to, uh, to judge others. But it, it tells us in the scriptures to not judge others. And if we are doing that and yet we ourselves are still doing it, but that's a, that's a bad place to be. So the way we get saved is through faith and then allowing God to test us along the way. Because Abraham did get tested along the way. Uh, and through that, through that testing, it shows that we still believe in God. And then giving thanks to him along that way is is the key to continue down the path. 
So as I read on and look for more, more nuggets here, it says, But him who does not work but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. Just as David also describes the blessedness of the man to whom God imputes righteousness apart from works. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whom the Lord shall not impute sin. So this is the, the gospel. He's going into the understanding the gospel. We all have sinned. We all have things that we do that are not righteous. Things that, that need to uh, die in our lives. But we can give thanks to him. For we're blessed when our lawless deeds are forgiven. And our sins are covered. For blessed is the man whom the Lord shall not impute sin. And that is the, the key there is to, is to have God's blessing on us. And that blessing will come on us if we're thankful to him. And if we choose not to judge others, judge ourselves. And to realize that as we see this, that we can humble ourselves knowing that we were unrighteous. And the way we are righteous now is because we choose to believe in him and give him thanks in all things. So going back to the, the whole thing about deception. Deception is at every, every turn of unthankfulness. So that is going to be my, uh, my path that, to walk this day is just to give thanks to God for every uh, turn I take, every step I take, in the sense to where just acknowledging him, acknowledging him for his for his love and his mercy and to, and to touch me and to lead me and guide me in the way to go. I am, it says I'm to become like a small child to enter the kingdom of heaven. So a small child does not concentrate on all the things that need to be done. He trusts he doesn't, and he says, he doesn't really even trust. In other words, it's not even something that he's consciously aware of. It's just part of his nature, part of a child's nature to just do whatever the uh, whatever the father says. You know, hey, let's let's go to the store and and get some candy, and jumps in the car and goes, and comes home, and you know, you know, it's it's time to uh, take a bath, or take a bath. It's just the the child is just following around the father and being led. And then as they grow up, th then they can learn to walk in a righteous way. So that's just something that I like to do when I go through the scriptures is just read them and, and allow God to, to speak to them t to me and, and realize I'm not here to try to find things to beat other people up with. I'm not here to find things to beat myself up with. If I am convicted of something, it's easy to repent. It's a choice to go, okay, yes, I'm doing that, and confess it. And as I confess my sins, he's faithful and just to forgive me of my sins. So may everyone have a blessed day and continue to uh, search out God's word for his truth. Humble yourselves when you come across uh, item of scripture that, that reveals something in your life that needs to be corrected and if you come across a scripture and, and you're thinking of somebody else and, and how bad they're doing that, remember <laughs> that's judgment and that's a jailer and you're going to be put in jail if you do that. So reject that, that thought reject that lie from the enemy because he's trying to deceive you into judging others because he knows if he can get you to judge others he's going to take you uh, straight down to the place where He's going to end up. So have a blessed day. In the name of Jesus. Amen.